Hello, Fran. So I got a new iPad. Yay. I've got it sitting here so I can actually see your guys' comments tonight. I'm so excited. Um, anyway, all right, girls, since I'm a little bit late getting started, why don't we just go ahead and hop on in here and get started on this project? So I've been doing a lot of running today and I didn't even look to see if you guys had guessed what this project was going to be before I showed you the inside. But as you may have been able to tell, it is just a little post-it note holder. And I decided to put this little pocket on the inside and put a little tag on the inside of that to give as a little gift to somebody. So of course that's a step you don't have to do, but I just thought it was kind of a cute little idea and a little something extra special to do with this. And then the closure is just a little magnet and I've got all this little blingy bling going on here. Of course you know me, I've got to have the bling. So let's go ahead and get going on this. Let's go ahead and get our chipboard ready to go. So what you're going to need is two pieces of chipboard. And now this came out of some designer series paper. And this was, you know how you, when you get your paper, it's in the back. Um, and this is what I'm going to use to, to make the, the book, the front and the back page of this book with. And you could use a cereal box if you want to. But I always keep these when I get my paper in to use them for projects just like this. So you're going to need two of these and each one of them needs to be three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches. So I'm just going to measure three and a quarter that way and this way. And I'm going to line my ruler up, make sure that it is straight then draw my line, then line it up here, draw across there, and I'm going to measure down three and a quarter from this line, and then draw straight across here. Then I'm going to continue to use this ruler. And just take my X-Acto knife and cut on my lines. And this is pretty thick chipboard. So I'm going to run it down through there a few times. And then I'm using an additional piece of chipboard underneath it so that I don't cut my surface. All right, so those are both cut. And then I'll just cut this way. So this is pretty easy to cut. Um, with an X-Acto knife and a ruler. Just be careful because you know an X-Acto knife is pretty darn sharp and I'd hate for you to, for you to lose a thumb. <laughs> Let's see if I got that one. Yep. Okay. So that's all we need our X-Acto knife for. I'm going to put that little puppy way over there. Move all of this out of the way. Okay, so there's our two pieces of chipboard, and this is some really thick chipboard. Now, for the rest of it, I've got, of course, I'm going to be using the new paper. This is the Love What You Do or Share What You Love. I'm saying it wrong. Share What You Love Designer Series Paper, Specialty Designer Series Paper. I've got two pieces. One of them is, it should be eight and a quarter by four and a quarter. When I was typing up my directions, I think I typed a seven instead of an eight. So eight and a quarter by four and a quarter. I have a piece of old olive. It's three by three. And then I've got a piece of berry burst, seven by three and an eighth. And then this right here, all of these circles that I've punched out, I had this piece of paper that was five by five and just or was it that big? Wait a minute. Let me think about this for a second. Maybe it was four by four. It was either four by four or five by five. And I punched out 
seven of these three quarter inch circles. I just wanted to save some time on that tonight by going ahead and getting this prepped. And then what I did with this was I used some of the faceted gems and then my regular rhinestones. I colored those with my Stampin' Blends markers. I used the old olive for the one in the center. And then I used the rich razzleberry for the little rhinestones and put those in there. And let's see if I'm forgetting anything. Yep, I do need one more piece, and I know I had it cut. It needs to be two and a quarter by four, and I'm not seeing it. Let me cut that piece really quickly. All right, I thought I had cut it earlier today. Maybe I didn't, or I could have dropped it on my way over here. So two and, um, two and a quarter by four. All right. I'm going to set all of this to the side for just a second. Now let me show you how to prep this piece of paper. I'm going to turn it so that the inside is facing me. So mark a half of an inch on all four sides. Okay. Now, let's make sure this looks like it should. I knew I didn't have enough space in the middle when I laid those down. That looks great. Alrighty, so I'm going to take some glue. I'm out of my Tombow, so I'm just going to use this right here. Put adhesive all on the back. Then what I'm going to do is line this up with this score line and the top and the bottom score line. Get that pushed into place really well. Okay, I'm gonna flip that over and grab my bone folder. I like to take my bone folder and just rub that across the back side of the paper and kind of smush that glue around. Okay. Make sure I've still got everything straight. Then I like to put my ruler down, take my bone folder, and just run that along each side of my chipboard. And that way the, the paper is going to bend better around the edges when you get ready to do this next step gonna go ahead and do these as well. You don't have to, but I just find it a little bit easier. Fold it like this on all four corners, kind of get that paper accustomed to the direction that I'm going to want it to go. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to be cutting at an angle right across here. But from this little corner point right here, you want to leave around an eighth of an inch space there. So my ruler right here has an eighth of an inch measurement right there. So I'm going to lay this down and I'm going to lay it at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to line the corner of my chipboard up right there with that eighth of an inch on my ruler. And I'm just gonna go around on all four sides. And I am not measuring an exact 45 degree angle. I'm really just kind of eyeballing it. So um, if you have a ruler that will do a perfect 45, go for it. I just don't have one. Then I'm going to take my scissors and cut all of those. And if you've never made anything like this before using chipboard, I will explain to you shortly why we're cutting that so that you have that eighth of an inch overhang right there. Make sure you can see that. I think you can. All right, so what I like to do now is since this is a pretty thick cardstock, rather than use liquid glue and have to try to hold it into place, I like to use some tear and tape or a really strong dry adhesive like this. Grab my little piercing tool. So the first thing I'm gonna do is these two short sides. I'm going to peel the adhesive backing off. And what I do is I lay this down and I roll my paper up and then over just like that. 
Yes, I do too, Kathy. I don't do projects like this a whole lot just because they are more time consuming. And I know that a lot of times people want quick and simple. So I don't do these kind of projects filmed or live very often at all. Again, I'm going to roll that over, push it down, and take my bone folder, just run it right there against that edge. Now here is the reason that we are leaving that little bitty piece of paper, that little eighth of an inch, is because if you cut that right up next to that corner of your chipboard, then when you do this step and fold in these sides, you're going to see that chipboard right there. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just taking my bone folder and I'm kind of like pushing and rolling that corner in right around the edge right there so that it won't like have a real sharp point sticking out when I fold this other side in. And then a lot of times what I'll do is go ahead and run my bone folder back and forth right there and kind of give that a curve. That way my paper is less likely to crack when I add another piece in there. Then once I've got it going, I'll just lay it down on its spine and just kind of wiggle it back and forth like that. Okay. Let me look at my directions and make sure that I'm going to tell you the correct step to do next because this is kind of involved. All right, so next we want to put our lining into place and I've just got that piece of berry burst right here. Now for this one, I don't mind using my liquid glue. Um, you can do it a couple of ways. You can use just the liquid glue or what I like to do a lot of times too is go ahead and take a dry adhesive and lay that down and get it as possibly as close to the edge as I can. I just said that totally backwards. Get it as possible <laughs> to the edge as I can. Go all the way around the outside. Lay this down flat, get that on top, make sure that I have it centered and even. Give that a good press, run my bone folder over it to get that liquid glue smushed down in there. Then I'll take my finger and push that down on the inside. Run it back and forth right here. Then just do kind of like I did the first time, just gently get it going where I want it to go. All right, so that is our book done, pretty much. All right, so next step is, let me think, what do we want to do next? Let's go ahead and make the pocket for the inside. All right, I have my trimmer here. So let's just go ahead and use that to do our scoring with. And thank you for those thumbs up if that was for me. So I'm going to take my piece of Berry Burst. I'm going to score it on three sides at a half of an inch. So one on the long side and two on the short side, or one on each of the short sides. So leave one long side undone and then score on both of the short sides and the other long side. Now I want to make sure that this looks like it's going to fit. Yeah, that's going to work. Okay, so kind of like we did before, I'm going to take my scissors and just cut diagonally, but I'm going to go right across where those score lines intersect with each other on this one. And fold and burnish all of those. I'm going to show you a way to put this together so that there's not these little tabs in the way of sliding any notes or papers or whatnot in and out. Now, this next step I like doing just because I like the way it looks 
And if you have like those little bitty post-it notes, they're like an inch and a half by something, two or whatever. Um, if they were slid down in, the, in this side, this pocket, you may never know they were there. So I like to use my two inch circle punch to put a little cutout in there and make it easier to see. So this is three inches wide. I'm going to mark at an inch and a half. And I think I'm going to mark down at five eighths of an inch. And this is just to give me an idea of where to punch. Okay, it looks like I've got that pretty well centered. Yep, that doesn't look bad at all. Now, what you'll want to do next is put your adhesive on the inside but on the outside edges of those little tabs then lay your designer series paper down in there and I'm going to get this even with this score line down here. Now it's cut a little bit shy of reaching these two score lines here so I'm just going to make sure that I have an even measurement between this edge and this score line, this edge and this score line. So then we're going to fold these over on the back. And then what that's going to do is you can use this pocket and slide things in and out and these little pieces right here are not going to be in the way to catch anything as you're trying to get that slid in and out of that pocket. Then I'm just going to put some liquid glue on the back here. and stick that right here on the left hand side and so there is your pocket done okay so I've got these post-it notes right here which I bought forever ago and it goes really well with this theme because they're polka dot and it's got pink and it's got black but I bought these today and I considered using those so let me just see if I like the way either of these look that's gonna be way too bright and actually Mm, I don't really like that either. It would be okay, but I think I like this square one better with this paper. I'm going to grab my Fast Fuse, and where the adhesive is on the top of my Post-it note, that's where I'm going to put my Fast Fuse. Then just lay that down on this side, and then whenever you get to the very last page, you can just leave that in place, get another post-it note pad, put adhesive on the back, and just stick it right on top of that piece that's left over. All right, so now I've got my old olive, and I've got a piece of Whisper White, and I'm going to be using my Stamparatus. I'm so excited that I have it. Okay, so let me look at my tag and I don't know if y'all noticed this or not but can you tell that in the center here it's a lighter green and then around the outside edges it's a little bit darker green I didn't know if y'all noticed that or not but I'm going to show you how I did that I need a sponge dauber and if y'all could see my tabletop you would understand why I don't know where the heck it is all right I'm gonna grab one really quick and here's an idea for you. Ooh, that's metal. It's sticking to this. I bought this little basket at um, Hobby Lobby. Thought it was adorable. And this is where I keep all of these sponges and my little daubers. Now I just got to figure out which one of these has my green on it. It's that one right there. So I'm going to be using Pear Pizzazz, Lemon Lime Twist, and am I using Berry Burst? No, I'm not using Berry Burst. I started to use that and then changed my mind. So what I've done here is I've got the I'm so lucky to have a friend like you mounted on this side of my Stamparatus plate. Got it popped into place. So I'm going to take my Lemon Lime Twist. Thank you, Fran. And I'm going to ink that up open my pear pizzazz, get some ink on that, and then I'm just going to dab around the outside edges, kind of in a circular motion. 
stamp that down, but it didn't stamp very well because I need to re-ink my ink pads. So I'm going to do this again, and I ended up doing this about three times, I think, today. Put some more ink, stamp it a second time. I think one more time will be it. Lemon Lime Twist and my Pear Pizzazz. Fabulous. Now, this y'all may have your stamp apparatus already and you may know to do this, but I'm going to pop this out, flip it around. Okay, so I'm going to do the exact same thing with this going to ink it up with my lemon lime twist, but this time instead of doing the top and the bottom, I'm just going to ink the bottom part of that and stamp that down. Yep, got to do it a second time. All right, now I need my big shot. I'm going to be using my layering squares framelits. I'm going to grab those out. So these are the two that I'm going to be using, which should be the third and the fourth from the largest. Let's move this out of the way. Get my little piece of washi tape over here. I hope that I don't have any of that ink on me. I usually keep old washcloths or dish towels in here and use those to wipe ink away off of things. All right, so I'm gonna get that centered up. Tape that down. Flip that over right there. Do my old olive. Okay, so now I'm just gonna run a couple strips of my Fast Fuse on the back of that. Pop that down there in the middle. And then this can go right in this little pocket right here. Cute! Now on the other one today, I used the Pear Pizzazz Shimmer Ribbon, but I thought that perhaps I would use some crushed curry. And there's not, well, there's some yellow tones in there. It's not really crushed curry, but I still think that the crushed curry looks good on there, so I'm going to go ahead and use it. All right, so I've got all my circles here. Okay, going to take some of my Fast Fuse. Where's my ruler? Use this to find the center. And that would, this is three and a quarter inches, so one and five eighths will be my center point right there. Right there. And I'm not really worried about it this way as much, but I might as well go ahead and mark it. So right here is dead center. I'm just going to take my Fast Fuse and run a strip right here. Going to lay my ribbon down on top of it. Wrap that around the back and this time I'm just going to kind of eyeball it since I pretty much know where that needs to go. Run some fuse across the back and this just keeps the ribbon from flopping everywhere and having to worry about totally unwrapping it and then totally rewrapping it back around. Now what I'm going to do now is I'm going to close this and I'm going to cut a piece and I am going to cut it a little bit longer than what I know that I'm going to need it to be because I'd much rather have a little too much ribbon and have to cut it off than it to be too short. So what I've done with all of these is I've taken three and three and glued them together and then this is a single one right here. I'm going to if I can find them. I'm just going to use my glue dots right now. I used the liquid glue earlier today, but of course, again, time. I want to make this quicker. So I put one of these circles right here just to cover up that raw edge. Now I'm going to grab my magnets, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I think I bought these off of Amazon. So I've got one I'm going to stick it down right in the center 
of that little dot. And I don't mind if it shows. If that's something that bothers you, you could always cover this up with another circle. But I want these magnets to be as strong as possible. Drop that one on top so that it actually holds my book closed. Because if I know if I weaken this magnet very much, then chances are it's not going to hold my book closed because as you can see until this book gets used a while it wants to pop open so that's why I'm doing it that way so I've got the two sides of the magnet that want to attract to one another okay so I'm going to lay this over here just like this I don't want this to be too tight because I want it to have some give so it doesn't pull loose all right going to blue dot again but definitely use liquid glue instead of a glue dot because I think it'll hold better for you so I'm just going to put two or three down here to make sure my ribbon stays where I want it to stay oops come on glue dot get down there okay there we go all right, so I'm going to close my book, wrap my ribbon, just making sure that I'm not pulling it too awful tight. Then I'm going to fold this back and just trim that off a little bit. See, it's trying to pull a little bit, but once this book kind of gets broke in, I think it'll be fine. All right, I'm going to go ahead and use some liquid glue now and stick my blingy piece on top. Then you're going to want to let that sit for a little while and get set up really, really well. And I even took one of my clear acrylic blocks and laid it on top and made sure that that glue grabbed a hold. So while that's drying, we'll like take another look at this one. And my glue dot came off of my magnet. So there we are. I just kept it really simple. I started to decorate the outside. Hey, Glenda. I am so glad you're here, darling. Um, I decided not to decorate the outside. I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. And that's why I just went with this pretty little blingy flower on the outside. And this one I did the smaller rhinestones. This one I did the next size up. Hey, Pam. So there is our post-it note, and I took my note out of this one. There it is. So I just think this is kind of neat, and I like to keep post-it notes in my purse so that if I have to write down a little tidbit of information or if I need to go to the grocery store and I just need to jot down a couple of things to remember to pick up, I can just grab that and put it in my notepad. I just wanted to share this post-it note with you ladies tonight. I hope that you enjoyed it. Glad that y'all were here tonight. Thank you so much for joining me. I love you all and I will talk to y'all later. See ya. Bye.